Hello everyone and welcome to this tech talk uh, about Lactoferrin. My name is Johnny Bunke. I'm the application knowledge manager here with GA. And uh, I'm Nana Borne. I'm area sales manager for uh, spray dryers for dairy and here among Lactoferrin. Today we want to address issues around lactoferrin. It's an extremely exciting dairy ingredient for a lot of different reasons. We want to go through some of the reasons why there's such a big interest for lactoferrin. And we also want to explain what GA can do for customers who are interested in producing lactoferrin. Let's start to take a closer look on lactoferrin. What is it actually? Nana, how would you characterize lactoferrin? Uh, lactoferrin is a, a whey protein mm -hmm. uh, with some special uh, nutritional functionalities uh, and, and uh, qualities and uh, it has got an antibacteriological effect. So there's been a lot of focus on it uh, for, for health purposes and in infant formula, for instance. So it's, it's not just the whey as a byproduct from cheese production. It's, it's, it's very specific. It's a much more functional yes, ingredient. Yes, yes, yes. And you mentioned uh, uh, the whey fraction, and it's, it's very interesting to see how that area has developed over the years. Uh, at one time, whey was truly a byproduct. All the value came from the cheese making. But today, these streams, cheese and whey, is very equal in value. Uh, it's still whey powder, which is the big volume whey ingredient. Uh, but over the last 10-15 years, there's been an enormous increase in the market for whey protein concentrates. The whole range of purities from WPC 35 up to WPC 80 and whey protein isolates the very high purity of whey proteins. But it hasn't really stopped there. What we see now is that there's a lot of companies interested in fractionating the whey proteins even further, all the way into pure alpha lactalbumin, beta lactoglobulin, the immunoglobulins, lactoperoxidase, and then the theme of today, the reddish lactoferrin. And lactoferrin is probably the ingredient that has the biggest increase in market share at the moment. Researchers are constantly finding new uses of uh, lactoferrin uh, every single day, I would say. There's a new use uh, for lactoferrin. How have you seen the interest for lactoferrin mm -hmm. in your line of work, Nana? Um, we have had several requests and we have done uh, recently four trials with, the, with clients. Mm -hmm that were interested in going into this uh, market. Um, we are now in the GEA test center where we have different spray dryers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have lab facilities. So, so on, on plants like the one we have in the background here, we have done some, some trials for some, some customers. And I see that it's important to see um, See the powder. To what get, are you to getting get out? It's get getting samples. sampling yes. in the process of deciding to invest in uh, in this uh, yes. type of, yes. of plant. Well, what about scale up? Uh, sometimes in certain areas you make a test and then you get a result and then you are nervous about what will happen if suddenly you have to scale mm -hmm. hundred times yeah, up. Yeah. Lactoferrin plants, commercial plants are very small because lactoferrin is really a, a minor part of the whole milk mm -hmm. volume. Mm -hmm. So uh, scaling up is not a risk factor at all because uh, compared to the plants we have here and that we do the trials on, they are maybe half size of what you would okay. install. Okay, uh, so it's just the scale up of a factor one. Yes, yes. Okay. And then uh, we have, um, you know, they get the powder with the back, they can analyze for the iron binding or the buyer activity. As we do the trial, uh, we do also testing in our lab facilities, mm -hmm. so they get particle size, but density, um, a lot of different information about the powder that they can bring home. Yes, mm -hmm. that's understandable. Pilot testing is really key 
for a successful mm. operation. Yes. Um, another important topic talking about latufarin is that even though latufarin is a whey protein, it's mainly extracted from skim milk, simply because the concentration in skim milk is a lot higher than in whey, and also the heat damage on the lactoferrin is less in unpasteurized uh, skim milk. The lactoferrin-free skim milk can be used for many applications, not for drinking milk, but it can be used for uh, milk protein concentrates, can be used for cheese making, can be used for uh, production of micellar casein, and uh, the whey proteins from that process can be fractionated into the uh, before mentioned ingredients, alpha lactose, alphamine, beta lactoglobulin. So there's a lot of options on what to do with the lactoferrin skim milk. As mentioned, the concentration of lactoferrin in milk is very low. Uh, in one million liter of skim milk, there is at most 200 kilos of lactoferrin. And in some cases, that can be even less. Uh, but due to the very high price of lactoferrin, due to the high functionality, uh, production of lactoferrin is a very sound uh, investment. Nana, can you explain a bit about what are the prerequisites for successful lactoferrin production? It is, of course, to maximize the yield yeah. and minimize the loss yes. of this uh, very uh, expensive uh, uh, powder. Um, in the spray drying, uh, we do that by having a setup like you see here in the back. Mm -hmm. We have the chamber, we have cyclone, we have back filter. It's under the cyclone that we take out the final powder. Um, some customers, they even install two cyclones. Mm -hmm. We have the extra efficiency cyclone and it will give them half a percent extra powder out, but it's worth it. Yes. Because what is going to the back filter, um, we see often a scrapped product because inside the back filter there are the um, polyester fiber bags yes. and there is a risk of having uh, fibers in the powder. Uh, at the bottom of, yeah. the, uh, the of the back filter. Uh, so also in infant formula, you would normally scrap what's in the back filter yes. due to that risk. Um, it is a pure protein, meaning that uh, the risk of deposits or anything inside is very little. Mm -hmm. There might be a small dust layer and you could say, yes, that's lost when you do a cleaning. But otherwise I would say, we get everything out. Yes, yes. So high yield, obviously, with yes. a product that is, has a value of close to 1,000 uh, euro, uh, it's very important. Until a few years ago, uh, freeze drying was the preferred process mm. of uh, producing lactoferrin, yes. probably due to the perception that the lower temperatures was good for this heat sensitive lactoferrin. Yeah, the lactoferrin denature when it's above 60 yes. degrees. It's yes. very heat sensitive. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so what is your view on that? What can you do with spray drying uh, to prevent and to improve the uh, lactoferrin drying process? Yep, uh, research has shown that uh, the, the spray drying, even though we run some high temperatures, uh, it's not damaging the, it's not, um, you know, lowering the functionality no, uh, no. Of, of the product. Um, on the other hand, you get some, some benefits from, from spray drying compared to freeze drying. Mm -hmm. Because in the spray drying, you can control the particle size, bulk density, particle size distribution. And that's very important when you are to mix such a powder into, into a, an another infant formula, powder. another mm. powder, you can see it's reddish due to mm. the iron binding, and you want, don't want to have you know a red layer in your uh, baby food because there is uh, lactoferrin in. When you do um, the freeze drying, you get you get a very coarse powder and mm. you mill it down, yeah. but it means you cannot really control the powder particle size, or it, it will be more dusty. 
Different and, particle shapes. Yes, and, and so the solubility also of the spray dried is much better. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there is an extra benefit, and uh, that's the fact of the investment and the running costs. Mm -hmm. uh, a freeze dryer is a more invest heavy investment yeah. than a spray dryer, uh, and also in operation. Uh, so so energy it's more costly use energy and, use yes. wise to run a freeze dryer compared to a spray dryer. So it doesn't sound like a good idea to use freeze drying if you don't get any added benefits mm. compared to spray drying. Yes. And it sounds like spray drying is actually advanced, has a lot of advantages yes. compared yes. to freeze drying. Sure. So with that comment, uh, we wish you goodbye. Thank you for listening in. Yeah, thank you for listening. Bye.